actually had a puppy that also ate a lizard when she was eight weeks old and it was a horrifying experience. Hey, I'm Kale McCann. I have been a professional dog trainer for over 20 years here at McCann Dogs. And today I'm gonna to be answering some of your top questions on nipping, biting, and chewing in regards to puppy training. This question is from Rishi Montestioga. I'm sorry if I said that incorrectly. Uh, what do you do when your puppy wants to chew on the lead? This is actually a really common question and it's something that a lot of puppies want to do. It seems like they want to put everything in their mouth when they're a puppy. So if they chew, a, uh, chew on the leash, you're actually going to treat it the exact same way as if they were to chew your shoes or chew anything in your home that you don't want your puppy to uh, have. First thing that I would do is I would uh, prevent the puppy from doing that by supervising and interrupting them each time that they go to grab the leash. A really quick alternative could be giving them some else to chew in the process especially if you're like inside the home for example if you're out for a walk and they're chewing the leash the best thing to do is just to stop and get your puppy to do something different so take the leash from them maybe get them to sit do them have them do something else that requires a little bit more control and then proceed forward the thing with the leash is you have to really teach your puppy what to do when they're on a leash and that can be done with some treats with some training and some guidance but if you just sort of leave the leash on and you're not really supervising or interacting with your puppy it's really normal for them to want to chew it. Uh, this next question is from Jen Ray. Uh, my puppy is nowhere this calm. He goes psycho if I try and grab his collar when he's in his mood. If you want a crazy pup to do a video with, mine's free. Uh, that would be awesome. If you're nearby, we would literally take you up on that. The thing is, we want to teach our puppy that taking hold of their collar is a really good thing. So you're going to notice that in a lot of the videos that we're working with the puppies, you're going to see us making it basically impossible for the dog to resist what we're doing because of how we're approaching it. We generally will have some food ready. We're slipping our hand underneath the dog's chin, taking a hold of the puppy's collar. We have a leash attached. Um, there's a couple steps that are sort of in place that gets the puppy um, encouraged and, and comfortable with what we're doing. And when you take the time to do hundreds of repetitions of taking the puppy's collar and rewarding them, what happens is that when you are in a situation where your puppy is being psycho and you go to take the puppy's collar, they go, oh, We've done this a bunch of times. I know that when mom takes a hold of my collar, if I relax, I get rewarded. You're counter conditioning the puppy to give you a different response instead of being psycho. So all you really have to do, Jen, is go back and do a little bit of homework. Maybe start when your puppy's a little calmer so you have more success so that you are able to take control in any situation. This question is from Debbie Shellman. I'm told not to use a collar on our Malshi. I'm confused because you use collars versus harnesses. Not sure how to take control without a collar. By the way, I have two weeks until uh, my pup comes home. Awesome question. We actually get asked about this quite a bit on the channel, collars versus harnesses, and we have a pretty strong stance on this. When you're training a dog, we do not recommend that you use a harness for your training because when you're attached to a harness, it's attached to the dog's back. And really when we're trying to gain control, it's much easier to do it on a collar. Now, when you have a really small dog, so a Maltese Shih Tzu puppy is gonna be very, very tiny, um, I would get a well-fit little collar um, that's gonna be properly uh, fit for a dog of uh, that size. And you're gonna start off by just getting your puppy comfortable on the leash first before you're doing anything. Um, I actually have a, a toy poodle named Hippie Shake. She's only seven pounds now and she's um, eight years old. And when we got her, she was really tiny. And we trained her on a collar just like our other dogs. We obviously just were a little bit more gentle with how we did things. So we definitely would recommend going with a collar over a harness. Now, later on in life, once your dog understands not to pull on the leash and they have some training underneath your, uh, their belts, definitely you could use a harness at that time, but when you're actually going through the training process, you're going to find that the harness is not really as effective. Uh, this next question is from Krista Dotty Arts, and it says, my puppy just ate a lizard uh, with a bunch of roll on the face, roll on the floor, laughing faces. Um, a couple funny things. Number one, not sure what this is relating to in terms of our puppy videos. But secondly, I actually had a puppy that also ate a lizard when she was eight weeks old. And it was a horrifying experience because I didn't know if the lizard was uh, poisonous or not. So uh, I feel you, I've been in that exact situation. It's very stressful. Highly recommend keeping puppy on leash, maybe supervising a little bit more closely. That was something that I was lacking to do at the moment that my puppy ate uh, a lizard. Luckily, she's five years old now. She's totally fine. Supervision, it's key and uh, maybe put the lizard back in its cage? I don't know. Mona Bailey asks, uh, how do you feel about the training collars that emit sound or spray? I have some thoughts on this. I think that they're okay. What I'm not okay with is people just going to this as the way to train their puppy or their dog for certain skills. And it also depends on what you're using it for. If it's for, 
uh, barking, for example, then it could be appropriate. If it's to teach your puppy not to chew things, if it's to teach your puppy to come when they're called, if it's to teach your puppy not to bite, then I don't agree with it. I don't think it's an effective way. I think it's important that you as a leader and as your dog's owner um, is the one that's actually teaching your puppy these lessons because it's gonna be really great for your relationship. They need to be used very tactfully and carefully and you need to have a little bit of education on how the timing of the dog training works. I think some people think that they can just slap a spray collar on or slap anything on their puppy and then it's gonna do all the work for them. Unfortunately, that's just not the case. We need to make sure that whatever tool we're using, we are using it with good timing and good, good communication because it's really what our puppies deserve. Jackie Baldwin asks, uh, what do you do if they've learned to go limp and roll when you try and call or, uh, hold their collar while training? <laughs> go limp and roll is a, um, it's a very common behavior that the puppies will do because they assume that if they do that, we're gonna go, oh, oh my gosh, and you know, take our hands away. And then the puppy goes, ha ha, I know exactly how to avoid that now. So the absolute best thing to do when your puppy does that is to keep your hand inside your puppy's collar and just lift them back up, get them into a more neutral position. That could be sitting, that could be standing, and you're just gonna kind of wait till your puppy relaxes. And you're actually gonna feel tension in your puppy's body kind of release and they're gonna be a little bit more relaxed. And in that moment, it's really important that you then praise your puppy and let them know that that was a really good choice. It's very common for you to have a puppy flip over and then you go to lift them up and they flip over again, or sometimes they get really wise and they decide to jump up or put their paws over your arm. They have all kinds of crazy things that they think of. So the best thing to do is just to keep going back to that neutral position while your hand remains in the collar until you kind of get the last say. You don't need to yell or scream or do anything during this. You're gonna keep yourself very calm and relaxed. And again, look for that moment, that window of calmness that you can then get some praise and uh, reinforcement in. Uh, Doreen Regan, they said, get a puppy. It will be fun with uh, upside down happy face. <laughs> I really think that sometimes puppies should come with a disclaimer that you need to have a lot of patience, you need to have a lot of time on your hands. Puppies are cute and cuddly and when we see them, all we wanna do is squish them and hold them because they're just the absolute best thing. And then you take it home and then you live with it and you think, oh my gosh, what have I done? Puppies can be really, really overwhelming, but it's really important that you have a plan. You need a plan with your puppy. You need to have some education on knowing what you what you should be doing. The experience actually can be pretty fun, I promise you. I've, I've done it more times than I care to admit. The work you put in when your puppy is young is going to reflect exactly what kind of dog you're gonna have as they get older. And remember, this could be a 12, 15, 16, 17 year investment that you're putting in. There's gonna be parts of it that are super unfun. I, I will admit to that, uh, but it's gonna be well worth the effort. There's a lot of people who get puppies that are really frustrated. So having that guidance, something like an online course can be really helpful. We have one called Puppy Essentials, and uh, it is really great. It teaches you all about you know everything you need to teach your puppy at a young age, plus all the behavioral issues like crate training, nipping and biting, house training, chewing, all of that stuff. But the best part is that it's fully supported by instructors. Six days a week, anytime you run into a problem, you just jump online and we'll be able to help you uh, within a few minutes. Look stuff, looky stuff, looky stuff, something like that. Hi, great video, but I do have a question. Doing this with the collar, especially the shake, isn't this negative reinforcement with the chance to cause fearfulness of being grabbed by the collar in the future? Thank you uh, for your video. Super, super excellent question. We literally did an entire Zoom call on this in our online programs last night because it's a really valid question. You know, we do use uh, the collar to control our puppies uh, sometimes to calm them down or to follow through if they don't sit. There's lots of reasons why we need to take a hold of their collar. So one of the things that we recommend every everybody do, whether you have a puppy, whether you, even whether, whether you have an older dog, is you need to take time to teach your puppy that when your hands go in their collar, it is a really positive thing. We spend a lot of time right from our puppies the day they come home playing little collar grab games where we'll have food in one hand and take a hold of our puppy's collar with the other and then we'll feed, 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 praise, pet, and then we let go. And when we let go, we stop feeding. So the puppy says, hey, put that hand back in my collar. That's when the best things happen. So when we go to address puppies, when they, you know, if I need to take a hold of my puppy's collar to take a shoe out of her mouth or whatever, I have already conditioned that puppy hundreds of times for understanding that when my hand goes in, she needs to be calm and relaxed. So you have puppies that don't get upset about it. It's really important that you're doing the foundational work on things like holding the collar before you're starting to use it and lots of other scenarios. And if you do find that your puppy is looking a little bit stressed about it, that tells you that you need to do a little bit of extra homework teaching your puppy, don't be scared, don't be worried. I just 
just need you to stop what you're doing right now. Not a big deal. It to, you just need to balance it out with the good and the bad. This question is from TH0T101. Try this, but my puppy just gets more excited when he gets the treat and he starts going even crazier and crazier. Puppy sounds very interested in food really good thing. That's a great thing that, that uh, the puppies are interested in food. One of the things that we recommend with puppies that are really high minded around food is doing something called a rule out. It's an exercise where the puppy learns that you get the treat by not going for the treat. And it sounds a little bit weird, but it's a great way for puppies to kind of learn to use a bit of self impulse uh, control in order to understand to get what they want. So if the puppy is jumping at the food, jumping at the food, and you keep the food he held inside your fist, for example, and you didn't allow the puppy to eat, sniff, lick, get at the food at all, eventually the puppy's gonna say, well, this behavior of jumping and going crazy is not really getting me anywhere. And if they stop and they pause for a second and you expose the treat and give the puppy the piece of food and you do that a few times, puppy jumps, 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 you do nothing, puppy offers a sit or puppy st offer offers just even stand still for a second and you yes and feed, the puppy starts to go, ah, wait a second, this behavior is what brings the food. So a lot of the time it's just because the puppies literally don't know any better. They're puppies, they have poor emotional control, they're excited about food and they act on it. It's, it's not a bad puppy, in fact, it's a really normal puppy. Our job in that moment is to change the narrative. It's to teach the puppy, yeah, you want this? Well, you're gonna have to do this and Instead. I could either show the puppy using the food or in this case for this particular puppy, I think a rule out would be an excellent way to teach the puppy to have a bit more self-control around something that he really wants. A lot of these questions today were related to uh, puppy nipping and just puppies being a little bit crazy. And a lot of this falls into the category of puppies needing more leadership. So I think that would be a really awesome video for you guys to check out because it sort of overarches everything that we talked about today. So to get more information about that, check out this card right here. And as I mentioned earlier, we have an awesome online program called Puppy Essentials for puppies that are under five months. So if you wanna get weekly and daily support from our McCann Dogs instructors. The link for that is in the description below. And on that note, I'm Kale McCann. Happy training.